You are not going to believe what I bound this quilt with and how I did it. It is soft and fluffy and easy and you're going to love it. Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting and welcome to my channel. You may have noticed I'm not in my sewing room. You're going to be hanging out with me in my long arm quilting studio, aka my garage, for a couple of weeks. You know, when I started this remodel, it just seemed so easy on paper. A couple of days of demo, the electrician for two days, then the sheetrock guys for four days. Guess what? It doesn't work that way. But next week, my sheetrock is actually going to start. So I'm going to film a few videos from this long arm studio. Today, I'm going to show you how I make a binding out of this soft, fluffy cuddle. Oh, it's the best. It's on the back of the quilt. So why not put it on the edge or the binding of the quilt? I've had people who've gotten my quilts with this kind of binding on the edge and they just love that soft fluffy stuff that wraps around. Let me show you why I chose this. This is the back of the quilt. For those who watch my channel, you may remember this quilt and I need to get it to this young woman. I just finished her brother's. This quilt is made out of clothing from her deceased mother's wardrobe. So that's what I'm doing and I'm matching the fabric on the back. The reason why I'm matching the flannel is because this is, this is all of her mother's clothing. I haven't added any additional fabric to it. And to come up with a binding just wouldn't really work if it weren't out of her clothing. So what I've decided to do is to match the backing. Let's get started. When you're working with a stretchy fabric like this Shannon Cuddle, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. The first thing is the straight of grain. Here's the selvage edge, and this would be the straight of grain. That is going to be, look at this, the non-stretchy side. Now, if I were to go the other way, look at this stretch. Isn't that crazy? It's really got some stretch to it. Now, I work 90% of the time with Shannon Cuddle because I sell Shannon Cuddle in my shop. I carry it for those people who send me quilts that want Cuddle on the back. I'm telling you that because I really like this brand. It's the top quality brand out there. There are other brands that are stretchy in both directions. I just wouldn't use those for binding, but there are some good varieties out there as well besides Shannon. So what I'm going to do first, you know, because I'm working on this slick picnic table, I'm lining up this fold. I have this fabric lined up on the selvage, so that's given me a straight edge. And I have this fold put right on a line on the ruler because I want to square it up. This is so awkward when I don't have the space that I'm used to, but we'll figure it out. And I'm just going to square up this piece of cuddle, okay? All right, we'll just throw this away. And then what I'm going to do is cut strips to use as the binding. A couple of cool things about this. Number one, it doesn't fray. When you cut with it, or when you cut it with a rotary cutter, it's gonna leave fuzz, but I'm gonna show you the solution for that in a minute. Now, when you work with a binding, you cut a two and a half inch strip and you fold it over. When you fold it over, that gives you one and a quarter inch to work with. So I am going to cut this at one and a quarter inch. And I need four of these strips to be able to do this quilt. 
I'm going to cut five just to make sure I have enough of this. Can you see all the fuzz that's left on my cutting mat? This is what we use in our shop. It cleans it up really well. We use this a lot in our shop because we work with a lot of cuddle. One of the things that I use is the Scrub Daddy sponge. It's the really stiff sponge with a little smile in it. You can just run it on your cutting mat. And it took everything up. And then I just vacuum it up. The first thing I'm going to do is sew all of these strips together. And I'm just going to do an end to end. I'm not going to do a diagonal cut. However, this has a nap to it. And so you can see this nap, it lies smooth. And if you rub it this way, it kind of stands up. I am going to make sure every piece I sew on is going the same direction. If I were to sew this one on, I would want to use the other end because as you see, if I go this way, the nap stands up. So I'm going to turn this piece around. Now I'm going to try rubbing it. That is the correct side. I'm going to flip this over, sew these two pieces together. I am just going to do them at a straight line stitch. Yes, we don't want bulk in the quilt, but what's interesting in using cuddle is, oh, you turn your machine on first. It usually works better. What I am going to do is back tack the seam. They're like that. This is so smashable. Does that make sense to you when I say smashable? It's not going to have this much bulk until it's all sewn together. But to sew it together, you can smash it down to almost nothing. Isn't that cool? And again, find my nap. Get another end. Find my same direction. Oh, it's not this end because look, I laid this nap down and to, I'm, I'm, I'm going from the left to the right. And here, if I go from the left to the right, it's smooth. So I'm going to go onto this end, make sure from the left to the right, it's the same nap. And that tells me I can sew those two pieces together. Did you get that? Or do I need to show it a third time? <laughs> like you're, you're going to tell me, right? Now the beauty of working with this is there's no ironing. You don't have to fold any edges over like this. We're going to sew it along just like this. I'm starting on the back side of the quilt, going to apply some standard binding methods here. The first thing I'm going to do is go right sides together and just sew it on. And I'm going to leave a little tail where I connect it. Just start anywhere you want to start about in the middle of the quilt. Let me just clip a few of these loose basting threads first. I'm going to lay this right next to the, the edge of the fabric and just start sewing away. Give about a 12 inch tail. Now I am going to also just use my standard foot it actually on the juki the foot sews a scant quarter inch so i'm just going to barely can you see i've got a little tiny peekaboo that's what i'm going to do and i'm holding it down and just sewing i am just going to sew this all the way around exactly like I would do it on a quilt with regular binding. I want you to stick with me because I want you to see a corner because I know someone will ask about 
Well, what about the corners? You'll be surprised what I do with the corners. I'm in a sew dyke, I do the regular corners. I'm in a stop at about a quarter of an inch, pivot and go right off onto the corner of the quilt. This part where you fold it back is a little bit more fidgety, I would say, because this is a little slippery. So you can use a couple of pins if you're not sure but I'm going to lay the binding down so it's, it follows along this line. Is that word perpendicular? And I'm going to use my scissors as a flat edge. You can use anything, but I'm going to fold the binding over like that so it makes a straight edge. Holding it down, I'm going to pop in a pin. Now that the pin is popped in, I'm just going to turn my quilt and begin sewing like I do on a normal binding. This is what I do to finish it. First off, get rid of the extra. There's nothing technical about this. I'm going to Fold this one back like so, and this one I'm going to fold over it, just like that. Then I'm going to take, this is a measuring tool, and I'm going to cut an inch from the top two layers. Alrighty, are you with me? Then I can toss those toss this back and I have this little piece and you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pick it up and sew it across. You could mark it with a pin. I am just going to be lazy. Stick a pin in it like this. Fold it back and come out like that. I can see it's going to fit. I will do what I always do when I bind and that is pin the quilt together to get rid of that bulk. Then I can work this binding together a little freer. All right. Again, I'm in a back tack. And that's about as technical as I get on this binding. So I stretch the binding out and look at that. It's a perfect fit. I'm going to get rid of some of the bulk and just continue sewing this down. Okay. Now, I don't iron or anything. This is what I do. I flip the quilt, just like that. And this is where Wonder Clips would really be nice to clip this into place, but guess what? Oh, they're packed away in the guest room and I don't wanna have to go upstairs. So I am going to pop a few pins in what you do is when I fold a binding over, I, I pull it this way out from the back to make sure it's, it's pulled. I get all the binding I want to work with. And then I use my fingers and I s make sure this part of the quilt is lying down and I just lay this right on top of it like so. You know what? I'm using kind of a silver thread. I wonder if I should switch to yellow. Here's the beauty. I mean, you don't want to use bright green or something, but it's not going to show. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put this on my machine and I'm going to sew, I believe you can see well, right along the edge of this, 
like so. Let me back tack a smidge. I'm using my presser foot as a guide, flipping this over and holding it with my fingers. Can you see my silver thread in there? <laughs> no. And I'm going to take this all the way around the quilt. Now I'm coming up to the spot where there's a seam in the binding and I want to show you how I get around that. This is it. I just hold it down even more with my fingers. Now let me show you. Here we are coming into the seam area and you can tell there's a little extra binding material. So I'm going to do something real technical. Use the scissors and trim it down. Remember I back tacked it so it's sewn real good. And that's that. I'm just about to a corner and I want you to see how I do the corners. I do them a little differently. So I'm still folding it down like so and when I come to this corner can you see that I've just folded it straight like that and I'm actually going to sew to this point right here. I'm going to come to the end of the quilt. Here let me turn it so you can see. I want to come to this point right where these scissors are and stop sewing. And I'll show you what I do from there, how I turn the corner. I'm going to back tack it, cut the threads. Then I'm going to turn the quilt. Can you see how it is? How I have it just sewn down like that? It's very simple. I'm going to take this side and fold it over like so. Put a pin in it. A wonder clip would actually be easier. I'm holding it down with that pin. I'm going to put a second pin in it and then I'm going to put it underneath my presser foot. Do a little back tack and so on. Also with this type of fabric as a binding you can be just a little bit inaccurate or messy and it's never going to show because of the high nap or the fur or the cuddle, whatever you want to call it. And look at the great edge it gives this quilt. Isn't that something else? I love putting cuddle on these clothing or t-shirt quilts. I find this method where you cut it and actually sew it on much easier than folding it over from the back. First off, I can be more accurate on my corners this way and get a nice corner like this one. Secondly, when I'm coming along trimming the quilt like this, I don't have to worry about cutting the cuddle on the bottom side, which I have done many times. I don't have a design wall, but that's not going to stop me from saying, ta-da! <laughs> what do you think? I think the little girl receiving this is going to love, love, love it. It's so easy. It's cozy. If I can do it, you can do it. Now, how long is my remodel really going to take? I don't know, but it is such a mess up there right now. I have to go up and Vacuum all of the insulation off the floor. Yuck. Monday, the sheet rockers are going to come and they're going to start filling in the holes. Can't wait. The new lights are wonderful. The engineer ordered some fun ones with features. I'll show you when we reveal the new cabinets. Before I leave, I'd like to say thank you to some very wonderful viewers. First, I have six new supporters. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dan Sellers, Deborah Holmes, you made me blush, Diane Beatsman, someone, Cindy Olson, 
Cindy, you're welcome. One of these days we're going to meet. You know how we're going to tell we're each other? I'm going to be the big tall chick and you're going to be the little tiny short chick. <laughs> and then Linda Godden, thank you all for buying me cups of tea. You were all so very generous. I love it and I appreciate you. I'd also like to thank Debbie Kroll for being a new viewer. I appreciate that, Debbie. Thanks for letting me know you subscribed. It means a lot to me. Then front office, Burnell, I bet with practice, you could get those hearts done on your domestic. The good thing is that quilt's not that big. What's up, 45 by 45? You got this, just, just practice. Get that motion going. You can handle it. Helen Petticord. You understood. You just have to worry about the center seam in the no waste windmill or pinwheel block that I made the heart out of last week. You know, so many of you responded positively to that video. You guys absolutely loved it. It is a beautiful quilt. Thank you for all of your comments. Lori Mergill, did I say your name right? I hope so, but you know who you are. Have you got your heart quilt sewn yet? Last I heard from you, you were running to go through your stash to see if you had enough red and pink to finish it. How far did you get? Come on, email me a picture. I'd like to see it. Deb Moeller, Jane Mason, and Tony Z, thank you all for commenting. I appreciate your comments. I really appreciate all of you who watch and subscribe to my channel. And if you're watching and haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you would subscribe. I have some goals I'm trying to meet and I can't do it without you. And if you don't want to miss one of my videos, hit the bell so you'll get a notification when I put up a new video. Until next week, I really promise I am going to get my blue and white quilt out I've been promising. And I'm going to make it right here in, in my gross garage. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye.